everyone, and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. I recently received a question in the comments section of one of my other videos asking regarding the Zoom R20 multi-tracker, how do I move around on the timeline easily using markers? I thought that would be a good question to address in this video because the R20, the advantage of it is that it has this touchscreen, which is fantastic. It allows you to do light editing of your audio tracks while you're building up your songs. And you just don't find those kinds of editing features available on other multi-trackers, at least not easily, because the touchscreen does allow you to navigate through your timeline and chop up audio files. It's great for mixing and matching your different audio regions. But I do find myself suffering from touchscreen fatigue at times because you do have to move around the timeline and jump from here to here. And it could be a challenge to do when you're always using the, the, the touchscreen and you're moving it back and forth with your finger. I wish it had a jog dial or some easy way to kind of navigate through the, the touchscreen timeline. So I thought for this video, I would show you how I use markers in my workflow in order to speed up the process. It allows me to jump around on the timeline very easily. And there are several different features with the markers. You, you, know, you may know how to drop them in right away, but there's other things that you could do besides just dropping them into different spots that I'll show you in this video uh, that might make your life a little bit easier when you're building songs, uh, especially songs that are three, four, five minutes long in the R20. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so what you'll see is that this song is almost three minutes long. It's just two tracks, but I do not have any markers placed on the timeline up at the top. Now, if I want to scroll through the timeline, I can touch the timeline marker up there and then drag it across to where I want. But like I mentioned, with the touchscreen fatigue, this is my least favorite way to move that timeline marker around. I can also tap the fast forward button and it will move the marker along in the gradations of the timeline ruler that you have set at the top. Same goes for the reverse button. If I hold down fast forward, you will scrub through the timeline quicker. So I'm gonna press and hold fast forward and you'll move through the song. Same goes for reverse, press and hold to move through. Again, this works but it does have a little bit of a lag um, when you release your finger and then it'll still go like usually one or two more nudges on the ruler or gradations on the ruler. So I use it, but it's not my favorite way to navigate through the song that I've laid down. What I always recommend that you do first when you complete a track and you know that you're at the end of your song is put a marker at the end of your song. It'll help you move to the end of your song because if I want to move to the, um, the beginning of my song right now, I'm on stop, I'm not on play, I'm not hitting play, but I'm on stop. So when the song is stopped, I can hit stop again and it'll send me all the way to the back. But I don't have a way to get to the front or the, the, the end part of the song. I have a way to get to the beginning of the song, but not an end of the song. Let's place a marker at the end of the song. I always do this for every single thing, that every new track that I lay down. Okay, so I'm at the end there. I wanna place a marker. In order to place a marker, we need to use that little flag icon at the top. I'm going to touch that, and then your options are add, delete, or we can use these arrow buttons. Now, if I hit add, the default is to call the first marker that you place on the R20 the intro. If we touch that, you get the keyboard, and we can call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it end. Done, okay. All right, so we have our marker in place end right there, but if you notice, it's not quite at the end. It's really close, but it's just a little bit off, and that's because of the way that the ruler is um, set in place. Now I could zoom in and kind of move this around and try to do a better job with it, but the other option that you have when you are placing your markers is you can move them around a little bit after you place them. So we are on the marker right now. Let's hit the flag icon again to bring up the marker toolbar menu. Now you can see end, I could touch it again, I could rename it if I want to, or I could delete it. But I could also use these arrow keys to move that marker around a little bit. So if I use that little arrow at the top, I can nudge the marker now and truly get it to the end of my song or nudge it back to where it was before. And you can use those arrows to just keep nudging the marker. All right, so I've got the marker now at the end of the song. I like that. Let's just 
touch off onto any part of the screen here and you'll get out of that marker menu. I've got a marker at the end. I can get back to the beginning of the song by pressing stop. It sends my timeline marker all the way to the beginning of the song with that one stop. I also recommend that we place a marker somewhere in the middle. That's typically how I do it. Place a marker in there, add intro, and I'll use, I usually call this half or mid. Done. Okay. Now I've got ways to navigate through my song a lot quicker than always using the touch screen to drag it long distances. This becomes a lot more important once you zoom in to your, um, your timeline because you want to start to move regions around. When you zoom in, it's, you, you won't be able to see the other markers that you have, but you could still navigate through them very quickly. Okay. So I've got a marker at the end, I have a marker in the middle called half, and I've got my timeline indicator. Let's go to the beginning. I'm gonna zoom out here for a second. So you can just kind of see how I use this. All right, we've got the timeline indicator, we're at the midpoint. I'm gonna hit the stop button one time, it sends me all the way back to the beginning. Now to move to your next marker, what you need to do is hold down stop, press and hold it, and then touch the fast forward button and you'll move the marker. Now I'm at the halfway point, hold down, stop again, hit fast forward. And now I've moved to the end of the song. This way I could just hit back or in order to go back, I just hit stop and I moved back to the midpoint, hit stop again. And I moved back to the beginning of the song. So you can use either stop or stop plus fast forward. Now, to navigate through your track a lot quicker. This becomes very handy when you zoom in. So I'll demonstrate that just very quickly now that you know what the commands are. If I wanna zoom in here around this halfway point, okay, now I could be manipulating my regions or playing around with the, um, the wave files. You can see I've got my marker there at the half. If I hit stop, I can come from the end of the song right back to that halfway point. If I want to go to the beginning of the song, just hit stop one more time. And now I'm back to the beginning of the song. Hold down, stop, fast forward, move to the, yeah, I'm at that halfway point now, hold down, stop, fast forward again. And I was right there at the end. Now, if I place a couple more markers throughout at the quarter point, maybe three quarters point, you could very quickly get through the rest of your track without having to suffer from that touchscreen fatigue. So it took me a little while to kind of get a workflow, but this is what I always do now. I chop up my songs into quarter, half, three quarters, and end. And then from there, if I have other important regions, I'll designate those. But this just gives me an easy way to navigate through the timeline using stop or hold down stop and hit fast forward. I hope that video was useful for you. And um, if you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section of this video below. With that, I hope to see you again next time. Thanks. Goodbye.